Hey guys, so today we've got a rather lengthy video regarding something quite a few people have asked me about and that's how to get into recording and editing airsoft videos. Of course, I'm talking about the people who want to seriously consider making videos and see the ins and outs about what it's like. I can totally understand this can appear to be quite a steep subject if you're aiming to make quality videos. First things first, do I think I'm qualified to help those of you interested in this process? I believe I am. I mean, sure, I don't have millions of subscribers or anything like that, but honestly, subscriber count means a little less than you think. It doesn't mean you know more about being creative or have a better understanding about making videos. I'd love to help those of you out there who are thinking about making videos, and that's what I'm going to do here today. Alright, with that out of the way, I'm going to throw a little list of topics your way. It might look like a rather short list, but it's pretty dense, so strap in and pull up your f***ing socks. For our list of stuff, we've got the following. Cameras and batteries. Camera protection. Editing software. What's your motivation? Okay, where do I even begin? All right, first things first, GoPros are the best option. This is the popular opinion for a reason. I can't recommend any third-party Amazon special GoPro clones. Runcam is an easy second option, but as it stands, GoPro is the king of action cameras. If you're serious and you're shopping around for cameras, you need to start with GoPro. For this video in particular, I will only be using GoPro as my head cam and selfie cam examples. Your head cam is the most important camera here. This is how people are going to see through your eyes while you're playing. This is also most likely going to be your audio source for your entire video, so you really don't want to cheap out on this guy. More on that later. I would highly recommend the following cameras. I'm also going to try and future-proof this statement because GoPro likes to release a new camera every freaking year. Get anything GoPro Hero 5 and above. At the time of this video, I use the GoPro Hero 7. Not only does it have great stabilization, there's no shakiness while running, it's pretty affordable and I can also easily charge while recording without buying third-party stuff off Amazon to do so. GoPro has a habit of overcomplicating the situation by removing the ability to easily expose the charging port with their newer cameras don't know why. On some of the newer, more expensive GoPros, you can expose the charging port, but it will also expose things like the battery and SD card at the same time. Yeah, sounds like a great design choice. They share the same latch door. Great job, guys. Great job. I know. You can buy dozens of different kinds of covers for these newer, better GoPros that specifically expose just the charging port, but that's just more money. If money is an issue, the GoPro 5, 6, or 7 all have detachable doors that expose just the charging port. I've had no complaints about the Hero 7, so I would just recommend that as long as it's available. And as far as I can tell, Nobody making airsoft videos is recording in 4K, okay? That's that's a lot of gigs. Of course, as I said, there may come a time these cameras are no longer available, and if they aren't, then you'll have to buy one of the newer GoPros and get yourself a door off Amazon that exposes the charging port. Just be careful about this though, because obviously this makes your camera not waterproof anymore. This is my helmet. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And as you can already tell, I love to charge while recording. And that goes for all my cameras. My head cam is mounted on a 3D printed mount made by Brain Exploder. I will also be linking this and many multiple other options of helmet mounts I can find that suits you best. This is the one I use, but 
there are many others just like it. You'll also notice I have a little arm in between the 3D printed mount and the camera itself. This is to extend my camera slightly lower towards eye level. Without it, I have trouble positioning my camera, especially while it's inside its protective case. More on those later. To charge while recording, I keep a Velcro pouch on the back of my helmet to hold a flat battery bank. I run a GoPro charging cable from the back into the camera. This pouch is actually meant to hold counterweights on the back of a helmet. This is to counterweight something like heavy ND cheese on the front. I've simply repurposed it by removing the weights and giving room for a battery. I will also be posting links to this product in the video description. You might notice I actually have another device here in between the camera and the battery bank. This isn't necessary, this is just my boom mic adapter. This serves as a means to both charge my camera and attach a legitimate microphone to my camera as well for better quality audio. This is totally not necessary for your videos, it's just something that I do. But Prairie Dog, what about the selfie camera? The same rules apply to this camera as they did for the head cam. I highly recommend a GoPro, but you can afford to be a little more flexible with this camera selection. The selfie camera isn't considered necessary, it's just a way to show yourself to your audience. It's more of a personal way to be in your video. I love the selfie camera because it serves as a great way to transition or jump cut around throughout my videos. Take a look at literally any of my videos. You'll notice that whenever I jump cut, I'll start the next segment with the opposite perspective, or the other camera. For example, I'll be on my head cam doing something, and when I jump cut to some other segment five minutes later in that particular game, I'll start that new clip with my selfie cam, or vice versa. It looks smoother for the viewer this way, it comes off as less choppy or confusing. For me, that's why the selfie cam is important. It's also a pretty great way to catch interesting things going on behind you. But Prairie Dog, what about your kill camera for all those epic 420 no scopes? This one is pretty important. In fact, it's much more important than the selfie camera will ever be. This is your scope cam, or BB cam. I'm gonna call it the scope cam though. As you're probably well aware, this camera shows what you're shooting at. I cannot, 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 can not tell you how much I hate watching videos that don't have a scope cam, even CQB stuff. I just can't. I'm sorry, but I can't ever see what the hell some of these guys are shooting at in some of these videos. Even the CQB speeds off stuff with tracer BBs. I just can't follow along easily without a dedicated camera showing kill shots. The scope cam I use is the Runcam 2 fitted with a 90mm zoomed lens. The camera, mount, and lens are packaged up by Brain Exploder. Again, I'll leave a link to all of this in the description. You've got three options here, okay? CQB range, mid range, and long range. Personally, I use the 90mm longest range possible. I used to run this camera on my sniper, and honestly, it doesn't feel out of place whatsoever on my HPA gun. I can shoot just as far, and it works just as well for CQB. Let me explain. For example, when I'm playing in our city field, the 90mm lens does not feel out of place. It's just as good here because it shows my opponents really up close on camera while I'm shooting at them. Honestly, it's kind of great because you can really catch the reactions to my shots, or the personal expressions they give off. And I don't have to do any zooming in during the editing phase, which could pixelate the video quality. I guess it depends on what you're doing, maybe what gun you're using, or where you play. I mean, if you play indoor CQB stuff, I probably wouldn't get the 90mm lens. Quick movements with a long-ranged scope cam can be a little dizzying at times. I keep both my selfie and scope cameras in close proximity to one another, so charging while recording isn't too much of a challenge here. Now, here's the thing about charging while recording. It's not absolutely necessary. I know I kind of make it sound like it is, 
but it's going to heavily depend on your situation. I play anywhere from 15 to 45 minute games, so the likelihood that my cameras can stay on while recording 60 FPS at a resolution of 1080p without an external power source is a bit of a coin toss. For me, there's nothing worse than a camera shutting off mid-game. It's pretty much game over at that point. It can be an absolute nightmare for someone who needs footage for weekly videos. If you're like me and you're very paranoid about battery life, I highly suggest getting battery banks for your cameras. I already showed you my head cam battery bank and how that works, so for my other cameras, I've found that the smaller the battery bank is, the easier it is for you to attach it to your gun. I'm a mount and rails kind of guy, okay? So yes, you can use zap straps or duct tape if you're a savage, but right now I'm using cylindrical battery banks that perfectly fit clamping scope rings which fit onto a standard Picatinny rail. These are honestly all over Amazon, but again, I'll post exactly what I use. As you can see, I'll mount my battery banks and run a short or long cable depending on placement. At this point, just use your imagination and position everything in whichever way makes sense for you. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem free. Protecting your cameras while recording airsoft is pretty important if you ask me. This is another reason why I like GoPros. The amount of third party stuff including protective cases, especially the ones that GoPro doesn't sell, are everywhere. You're gonna want to pick up a waterproof housing for your GoPro. Although newer GoPros are already waterproof, these cases protect the lens or touch screen from BBs. I've modified my housing and drilled and filed several holes near the microphones and charging port. This allows me to protect my GoPro while also being able to do all the things I need to do to properly record videos. Although I use an external boom mic for audio, when it rains, I can't use it, obviously. Therefore, I need to maximize the amount of audio I can pick up while my camera is essentially trapped inside a soundproof box. Believe me, a GoPro inside a waterproof casing sounds very different compared to one that isn't. You also want to be careful about putting your GoPro inside these housings. In high heat conditions, like the heat of summer, the heat your camera gives off, especially if it's charging while recording, can be possibly trapped inside the housing. This is why you want to drill some holes anywhere you can to help the heat escape. If you choose not to keep your GoPro inside of a housing, just be prepared to buy a new lens in the event it ever gets cracked by a BB. The biggest issue for me though aren't BBs, it's weather. You see, newer GoPros are waterproof like I said earlier. I can use them and charge in between games if I have to instead of during games, but it's the scope cam that isn't waterproof. You need to be careful when it comes to this. Either don't record in the rain or wrap that fucker up in plastic wrap. It gets the job done, you just need to be mindful about what you're doing. One last thing before we move on here, you need to make sure all your cameras are recording in the exact same frame rate and resolution. Once you chuck all that footage into your editing software, it'll be next to impossible to edit it all together if the frame rates or resolutions aren't the same. However, there is a way to fix this if you screwed up, but it's very time consuming. You'd have to watch all your footage through and up or down scale everything through a new recording via OBS. That's actually how I upscale movie scenes or other strange clips for little bits. Most of that stuff I use for my videos aren't natively 1080p resolution. I'm not sure if I recommend that for entire chunks of accidental 4K footage of you running through a forest though. So please be careful. Alrighty, so we've covered everything camera related as far as I can tell. Now let's say you're at home and it's time to put it all together. First off, you'll need a way to transfer the videos off your SD card to your computer. 
you're gonna wanna pick up an inexpensive SD card reader. You put in your SD card, plug it into a USB port, and just drag and drop your files into your computer. Here's the rather iffy part though. When it comes to editing software, it's going to be a little difficult for me to give you a guide on this. Everyone uses different software, whether it be Adobe Premiere or Windows Movie Maker. Personally, I use Blender. It's actually 3D modeling software, but has a video sequence editor built in, and it's free. I can set it up for whatever frame rate or resolution my videos are, and it gets the job done, at least for now. The problem with Blender though, is that I'm afraid it's not entirely first time user friendly. When you first download it and switch over to the video editor, it's sort of a blank slate. It's not going to look exactly how like you see it for me. That's because Blender is rather modular in the sense that you can shift around all these sections, change them up, or add or remove sections entirely. That being said, if you are interested in using Blender, I will leave a link to a Blender video editor tutorial on how to begin the initial setup so you can make it all look exactly like how you see it here. This video that I'm going to link for you is the one that I personally followed years ago and that I used to learn how to use Blender, okay? If you follow that tutorial, you'll have a timeline, preview window, and general video properties all at your disposal and you'll have nothing to worry about. I might make a follow-up video on how to use Blender specifically, we'll just have to see. I just don't know yet. That's a whole nother chunk of time on top of this video's lengthy runtime. So please, forgive me for that. Okay. But let's say you've got your editing software all figured out and you've got your head cam, selfie cam, and scope cam footage all laid out. The only thing left for me to explain here is that you're going to want to synchronize your audio. Remember when I said your head cam might be your audio source for your entire video? What I mean is that you need to pick one of the three cameras that you have with the best audio quality. This is more than likely going to be your head cam because it's more likely your best camera and its microphone is facing the direction of the action. Your selfie cam might sound just fine, but it's also resting on your gun, which makes noise, vibrates, and is most likely inside a protective case which muffles sound because it's more likely to get shot than your head cam is. You have three sources of audio here, but you only need to use one for the entire video. You might not know this, but switching between audio sources throughout your video, for example, whenever you change to a different camera perspective, will really cause your audio levels to sound out of balance. Stick to one, it'll be much smoother this way and there will be little room for human error. In order to synchronize all the audio strips for your cameras, you'll need an audio reference point to work with. Maybe you'll scream the word spaghetti or penis before the start of every game. You'll use this as an audio reference point to shift your video and audio strips at the same time closer in sync to one another. I highly suggest because you have three audio sources that you mute one of the three and sync up two at a time. It can be a little distracting listening to three audio sources while you're trying to sync up two, if you know what I mean. Oh, oh god. Oh god. Oh, oh god. No. You need an adult. Oh god. It's like you're sprinting. Uh, uh, oh. Oh my god. Oh. You need an Okay. Yeah, you're recording. Once you finish syncing up two, you mute one again, probably your selfie cam, and unmute the muted camera, probably your scope cam, and then sync that one up afterwards with your head cam. You'll know you're synchronized once you aren't hearing any repeat audio. You can also use visual cues to help sync up your cameras, but obviously they aren't my first choice. If you forget to use a sync word, don't panic. Okay, don't panic. There's always something to use as an audio reference point. Maybe someone next to you burps really loudly or someone nearby laughs. That's actually how I sync up most of my videos now. I don't even use my own reference points anymore. Just be prepared to go mentally insane because you're going to be constantly replaying footage in order to get that perfect sync. Once you do get it though, you'll know. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm coming! My foot is like in your crotch! That's how I like it. Oh. Aw, hell yeah. I want to close out this video with a little question for you. And that's, 
Why do you want to make videos? Do you want to be a YouTuber? Do you want training footage for you or your squad? The last thing I want to do is put off anyone with an ambition to be creative here on YouTube. Just know that this takes hard work. Very few people get their audience thrown at them for free. And for some of those that do, they don't truly realize the shortcut they've been handed. I try to upload every week. When I do miss a week, believe me when I say I have a good excuse, but I still go a little crazy because I definitely panic when I can't upload for the week. If you're looking to dive headfirst into this, it's a serious commitment. You'll need a lot of patience and a willingness to learn and improve over time. Personally, I'm comfortable right now where I am. I have my own editing schedule that fits around a full-time job and personal life. That being said, one day, if such a day does come, I want to upload Airsoft content two to three times a week. I have my own roadmap. Don't shut out your creativity. If you have a vision and you wish to follow it, give it your best shot. If you wish to create videos for Airsoft, or paintball for that matter, I really do hope this video helped you get started. My aim is to equip you with the knowledge so you can take your first steps. I can't show you how to make your own videos though. That takes your own imagination and creative mind. All I can say is try to be unique. Try to be helpful to others and be a positive personality that your audience can relate to. It's not always about the kills, the expensive sponsorships, or ugh, the cheater videos. It's about how you can shine some positivity on your hobby and help it grow. If that's your goal, welcome aboard. I'll see you guys next time.